Um, so I'm working on this size. Normally I work bigger, but this, if I work any bigger, it's going to take me a couple of hours. Um, so I want to be able to work quite quickly this evening. So I'm working on this size. It doesn't matter what colour you work on. I think the last time I did it, I worked on a buff colour. But I suppose this anthracite is quite good for, because it is, it's a very monochromatic um, photo. And the photo was actually taken by my son, Robert. It's in Canada, in British Columbia. And I rather like adding colour to these sort of scenes. Um, if you wanted to work on anthracite type colour paper and you haven't got it, I think I put in the notes that you could, you can put a watercolour underpainting on it or a very light, like acrylic ink or something, or use a soft pastel and then wet it with water to get the under colour that you want and then wait for it to dry. But you can only do that if you're working on pastel mat or you art. Um, or one that's waterproof. There are a lot of papers you can't do it on, but definitely pastel mat will do that. Right, so I'm going to kick off, and I'm going to kick off just by mapping in my key shapes, just to get the outline. And I'm not so much going to draw as just put some marks. And I don't know if you can see, that. that's probably not light enough for you to be able to see. So I'm gonna go in a bit lighter. And it's just to get some outline where these trees come down. And at this point, it doesn't really matter what colour they are, as long as I can see them. That's my bridge going across there. And if there's any questions, my husband's sitting in a chair behind me in case anybody asks questions and I need to answer. So hopefully he's actually watching. <laughs> down there and then this snowy bit comes in across here and these bushes and trees come down here and that is kind of the shape that I want and then there's a big tree going down there so that to me looks about right okay so as normal, I start with my darks and it doesn't really matter what, um, it doesn't matter what colours you use as long as the value is okay. And I like to do dark underpaintings. So I did put some um, colours up, colour sort of swatch up, but I got that by matching, by picking colours in Procreate from, from the painting that I'd done. Um, and it's not particularly accurate, but I would say just grab any darks that you have. You want a mix of darks, blues, browns, purples. And as long as they're all of similar value, you can use whatever colour you want. But already you can see in here, mixing a dark mauve and a dark green, you actually can see that it... Um, looks like some areas are coming more forward and my the way the other way I work is to get all of my um, colors on first and then that's all right I've lost a piece of equipment right Ian could I ask you to get me um, see the sponges over in the corner could you get me one of those, please? Or that blue one there, actually. No, top. On the little stick thing. That's it. That's it. That's lovely. I got this out ready and left it behind the camera. So I'm using a pastel matte blender. But you can use anything. And I have used kitchen paper really effectively. So these blenders are quite expensive. But eyeshadow applicators that you can buy in packs of sort of 20 work just as well but what I want to do is get this colour deep into the paper so that I'm keeping my tooth so I'm able to paint over it so I'm thinking of this my ends just peeled off I'm thinking of this as my dark underpainting and it's sort of 
I think of it as the colour under the water, the depths of the water, if that makes sense. And as it goes back, it's going to get a bit lighter. And there's going to be some light on it. So this is sort of quite a bright blue. Now, because we've got a monochromatic um, picture, you can choose what you want. So you could have a, a sort of a yellowy sky or a, an amber sky, a pink sky. You could have pinks and mauves. I'm going, this is more bluey and this is quite bluey and I want to use that. It's like an ice blue. Um, so I'm going to go for more of a yellowy type sky. But in order to get there, first of all, I'm going to go in with a very, very pale lilac. Because I want it to have some contrast. I don't want all the same colour. I'm going to put a bit of, um, it's quite a grey actually as well here. It's actually the colour I use to put my trees in with, so that's going to confuse things. But this lilac's a lovely light colour. And I very, very rarely use white. Try to avoid it, actually. I'm going to put some yellow in here. But I'm going to blend it all out, so we're going to lose all the vibrancy. And I'm hoping that my grey doesn't have so much blue in that it's going to make everything look green. And again, I'm going to blend this in. I'm going to need more pastel like this because it's lighter colour. So it's much harder to cover the paper up. Now, if I had a lot of time, I would use the wet technique to blend this. Uh, which is just you put colour on everywhere. Use a brush either with water or um, white spirit. Now, well, your white spirit can be proper surgical spirit type thing or it can be alcohol. So I tend to use vodka because it dries quicker than water. So I want to make sure everything's covered. It does look a little bit green, but I'm not too worried at the moment because I know I can tone it down a tad. And I'm not going to work all over, I'm going to work all over just putting my first layers in and then I'm going to come back and put top layers in because I don't believe you can really work out what colours you want until you've got colour everywhere. So I don't need to put such dark underpainting in because I've got all of this um, anthracite paper but can you see this to me here it looks quite pinky but I'm going to put some of my darker things in so this tree trunk comes straight down there like that that's probably the darkest thing in the whole painting and I'm just going to put in my bridge I will be painting that over don't worry I often find when I'm working slightly sideways on so that I'm not in front of the camera that I end up with a bit of a slope. But bear with me. I'm sure it will sort itself out. So I actually want something quite warm at the back here. Uh, let's see how this works. It's a bit darker this bit here so I'm gonna go in this is a very very dark bluey green and I'm using a really light touch you can always go over it If you want to ask any questions, I have got Ian manning the uh, question, so ask away if there is anything you want to ask.
I've got a dark, very dark blue in here and I'm not thinking about any detail at this point. I'm literally just putting shapes in. Bring that sky down a little bit because it comes right down here behind the trees. And I can go over my trees. Fade that yellow out a little bit and then I'm going to blend again. One of my favourite things, I don't know if you can see, is this. It's a, one of those really, really fluffy cloths. Um, and I just sit with it on my lap and I clean all my pastels off on it. Trevor Ball said, do you have a favourite Trevor song band of pastel you use? I use a lot of Unison. Um, I, Sennelier are probably the next ones I use. There's a lot of really nice American ones, but of course they're a lot more expensive over here, so I don't tend to buy them. Um, it's a lot I'd like to try. I find Schminky too soft. They just break on me. Um, and the others are a little bit harder but what I like about Unison is they're they're really they're soft but they're really robust so they don't sort of fall apart a reddish brown a reddish brown uh I'm, I'm not sure where do you mean this one this is a reddish brown in here and then this one that I used here that's quite a warm it is quite a warm brown But there's loads of pastels that I would like to try. Um, I did attempt, <laughs> when we went to America, I attempted to go to Blix and buy some of the American brands. And we drove, we, well, we got a cab out of Las Vegas to go to the shop. And when we got there, they sold hardly anything in the shop. It was all mail order. And the only ones they had in the shop were Dale around me. And I was so disappointed. Not half as disappointed as my husband was. <laughs> Right, so I'm blending these in. And it does help that I've got that anthracite at the back there. a bit misty this might be too warm and you might find I'm going to fade it down after a little while so I want some colour in here and this is actually a bit warmer coming forward I don't want that same brown so I'm going to find something a little different so it doesn't matter how many pastels I choose up front I will still go away and try and find some more because it's not until you get them on the paper that's better. You can see what they look like. See, this is a really, really gritty pastel. I don't think that's the unison. So there's no shape to this yet, really. It doesn't matter if I blend out because the trees are all quite fuzzy. I've got my basic shapes and then I sit here and go oh now what do I do I think this needs to be darker up here so I'm actually it's the same color I used but because it's not blended this time it's going to be more obvious Put more down here this side's more blue that's too bright. This is a dark, very dark blue grey. I am going to blend a little bit more. So I'm still filling up the tooth of the paper. I want to get rid of all of that paper colour, the grey. I've got to leave myself enough tooth 
to be able to put my lights on over the top completely. It's not looking too bad. I've got some damage in the paper, so I'll have to try and paint over that. But uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to come back down and put some of my snow in. And I think this is where we can get a bit expressive with our colours. So I'm going in with some bright blue here. And you never know what it's going to look like until you've done it. Uh, I've got a green. Let's try that, see what that looks like. Mm. I don't know. We won't know till the end, till I've put more colour on whether that looks ridiculous or not. I quite like the way it does look like there's a bit, makes it look like there's a bit of light though. I'll just put that on some of these little rocks. like there's a little bit of light somewhere in there. Okay. Now I want to put some trees in the background. Now they need to be fairly cool and not too dark and probably on the grey side. That's probably quite a nice colour for them actually. It's sort of slightly greeny might make them look like they're a bit more in the background. And I may well have to paint in around these, my sky. So just a few shapes. I want some other colours to mix in with those as well. Let's try this one. It's a similar value. That's too similar. Too similar in colour. Have a look at what else I've got. Some mauve colours will probably look quite nice there. Again, I won't know until I get it out and look. Try it on the paper. This is a grey. Yeah, this looks a bit darker. I could actually use a little bit of that in there. some wispy outlines. Yeah, I've just noticed Mary's comment. Um, Blit does have an online store, Mary, and it sells tons, but in its actual shop, its physical shop, it has practically nothing. And I must admit, Jackson's is the same over here. I, I went up to Jackson's all excited. And when I got there, there was hardly anything in the actual shop. I think most of this, they just don't keep it in stock nowadays because so many people order online. Might have strange shaped trees there, but we'll worry about that in a minute. And if I make mistakes now, I don't really mind because I know I can paint my sky back in and paint over it. Yeah, Dakota pastels, I know, uh, but they don't supply over here. We only have Jackson, so of course all of the American ones are much more expensive over here. I think this could actually be a little bit darker, but I'm putting it in in this colour first. Yeah, 
Now, I love it when it gets to the stage where it just looks a great big mess. Um, because then you've got to think, right, how do I begin to make this look okay again? So, let's think about the colours that we want. Uh, I'm going to come back down and do a little bit more on the water. So I want it to look like there's some light on the water. And this turquoise makes quite a good colour. Need to make that lighten up a bit as well. I want some movement down here in the front. And that's going to get lighter and lighter as it goes further back. So I want something of a similar value. I've got one, it's the same, it's just the same colour but much lighter. So I need a couple that are going to bridge between those. That might do. That's quite a good one. This is going to be a completely different colour to the one I did before, the one I posted completely. But that's the fun, isn't it? Don't you think? And then I can go in with something even lighter. Now that is the same colour I used on the snow, so I don't want that colour. I think about this I'm going to go actually with my snow I'm going to change that I'm going to make it I'm going to come in with this with the mauve and I've got it's not I'm going to it's a judgment call as you go along to think, well, what does look okay? What looks terrible? Do you use proper pro chrome pastels? Do I use? Proper pro pastels. Yeah, I only use professional pastels. Oh, pan pastels. Sorry, my husband can't, he has, probably hasn't got his glasses on. <laughs> I do use pan pastels, not that often, um, but I do quite like them. They're really good for backgrounds and things. Uh, I want this a bit darker in here, the background. Some of the trees. Thank you. It, I, I'm, well, that's very nice of you, but I, to be honest, it's looking a bit of a mess at the moment, but that's the fun, isn't it? I want this, I want a bit more depth in here. That's quite warm here. Not that there's much colour in this at all. So in this corner here, there's quite a bit of light on that um, tree. So if this is my snow colour, which I've decided to, or is one of them anyway. In fact, I'm going to have, I'm going to put a cool and a, a slightly warmer on there as well. So I'm using a bluey grey this just to get on my branches that sort of fades into the background and then that nice violet which I love Judy do you ever paint plein air if so what sort of kit do you take with you Ooh, that's um I do um I'm trying uh, whether I can explain it all while I'm painting as well um, I tend to paint oils actually if, if I do plein air more than pastels I want to paint more plein air pastels and I probably will this summer but they're heavy aren't they 
Um, so it's probably not the answer you want because you're asking me, I assume, about pastels and I don't tend to use them plein air. might be too fat these lines I might again be trying to paint paint them out but let's see let's see how it goes it's a bit of gentle light touches and that actually comes quite a couple of trees going up there I am, I can't say I am a, an all weathers plein air painter, I'm a bit of a fair weather painter, you won't find me outside painting snow scenes, I'd love to, but I'm too much of a wuss. They are beautiful though, aren't they, snow scenes? He was asking why, because he's wondering you transport a pastel set up. Yeah, yeah, so I would actually transport, I've got this um, Heinemann box here, um, I don't know if you can see it on the side over here it's a wooden it shuts up I can't shut it up because it's got my pastels in but once it closes up they're all securely um, held and I because I teach a lot so I'm always taking my pastels out and so they tend to come with me in that or or often in fact when I have done plein air I've just taken one of my big boxes of um, pastels like a sennelier big box with the colours in that I want so you can do it right that needs to go oh there we are so these are the sort of problems you get into I need to paint that out yeah and there's the way you can solve it lovely now they look a bit mm, what's the word stark to me now the question is how do I merge them I might just do it like this I probably used too dark a colour I should have used Dorothy says you can get a smaller box that will go on a tripod and take a smaller selection of pastels yeah well actually if I if I when I do demos and things I will take my pastels in my easel which is a like a box easel that has a palette in for your oils but it's got a well so I'll put them in there and close them up so yeah that's a good point I do do that right so I'm just going to fade this down a little bit because it's all a bit too garish So I will, should probably have used more of a grey for that. But I think that's all right. I think I can get away with that. And then down here we've got some of this light on the trees again, on the branches. Do many of you paint plein air with pastels? Well, I can ask questions, can answer. I mean, do many of you, because I like all um, mediums, I paint in oils, I paint in... Georgia says she's done it. What, with pastels? Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely. So, I like all mediums. So, does everybody, or who paints in all sorts? Who's just pastels? I get bored with just doing one thing. I like to mix it up a bit. It makes it hard because <laughs> you never master anything. Right, that's looking okay. 
should step back really. There's a bit more background in here, some more trees. It may need to be a little bit darker, so I want a slightly darker grey for that. She says she takes small pieces of pastels, not the pencils, and uses like art paper. Okay, yeah, good idea. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sorry if my head keeps Dorothy getting... does mostly pastels and some coloured pencils and watercolours. Yeah. Likes watercolors, flowers. I like. She likes detail. Yeah, yeah. See, and I paint very loose. So, I mean, if I were doing pet portraits, I'd use pencils. But I really like the dibby dabby that I can do with pastels. I like this sort of impressionistic effect. I think. Same guy uses both oil and pastel. Trevor uses does portraits in pastel. Then is always oil. Yeah. Nobody uses acrylics much. Out of, well, out of the people that seem to be on here. Acrylics are really hard to use if you're out unless you've got um, a specialist medium for them because they dry so fast. Oh, they're very purpley, aren't we? I did, um, I did um, the Norfolk paint out, which is a plein air event a couple of years ago and one of the ladies there was using golden open acrylics and they, they looked great because they looked just like oils but then i'm not sure i see the benefit of using them over oil she's like, used acrylics in the past she likes them yeah i mean a lot of people think that oils are Trudy wants to know how you do in the trees how do i do that what these trees my famous dibby dabby method just a really, really light touch of tapping so that your marks all look slightly different. Well, that's the, that's the theory. And then as I come forward, I'm going to get lighter as these trees come in front here. A lot of people think that oils are not good for the environment, but actually I think they're better than acrylics because acrylics are plastic. And you don't need solvents with oils. There, that's looking better. Put some of this here. Mm. I'm gonna have to put some of that green over there to make it all match up a bit. be darker in there. Mm. Put something even a little darker. This may be too dark. I think we'll get away with that. Do you use water-based oils? No, I really can't get I tried. I really can't get on with them. I find them so sticky. There's nothing quite like the feel of really high quality buttery oils and the water-based ones just don't. We've actually got um, a demonstration soon at our local art club of somebody doing water-based oils so it'll be interesting to see how he manages. Whether I just had a, you know, was trying a cheap set but they're, they're pretty standard. Yes, that's looking a little bit better. Maybe use the water soluble oil paints. It doesn't like the oil for the smell. Is that the smell of the solvent or the smell of the, the linseed though? Because 
you can find oils mixed with um, different oil bases and you don't need to use the solvents. Tina loves, loves your pastel on pastel mat. Yeah, pastels on pastel mat is my favourite. I just find that it's so forgiving because even if you do dreadful things to it and you hate it, you can even wash it off under the tap. So although it seems really expensive when you first look at it, it actually isn't. I need some of this sort of colour, but it needs to be. Doesn't like the solvents. Oh, it's the solvent. Well, then don't use solvents. You can use just use um, oil, or lavender oil, or linseed oil. You don't have to use solvents at all. Um, you can use oil to clean your brush, just even olive oil, and then um, wash it out with soap and water. And in fact, one of the professional artists I know, whose courses I've done, he just leaves his brushes, his oil brushes, in um, a bag with oil in it. And they come out, I tried it as well, and they, they just sit there and they come out beautifully clean and fresh and, yeah, malleable. This might be too dark for in here. It's difficult to know till you've done it. I think we might get away with that. Bring that right down. They look much too um, uniform because we have this habit, don't we, of we're programmed to make everything look uniform. That's a bit better. Uh, they've got some dark at the bottom. Right, so I need to do quite a bit more. There's not enough variation in colour in my trees at the back. And now I want to try and get this um, light effect in. So I'm going to start coming in with some of my warmer colours and see how we go with that. So I'm going to start, first of all, with this very bright one. And I don't want it to be too shocking. So I'm just going to put some in. It's really just where it's catching through. It's going to look really ridiculous for a while, but, you know, bear with me. A nice sunset. We've had some cracking sunsets here. I'm on the um, Thames Estuary. As you go into London, we're right on the coast. And we have amazing sunsets with purple skies and bright oranges. It's incredible. You wouldn't expect it. Right, so now that looks like it's on fire. How do you clean your pastels? Um, with this great big soft, fluffy... Um, you use sand. Oh yeah, sand. <laughs> There's a story about me trying to clean my pastels. So, um, tapioca, rice, rice. Tapioca is supposed to be very good. Um, rice is supposed to be the best thing. But I didn't have rice, so I decided I would just use what I had in the cupboard. And because I didn't like it when I bought it, I tried using quinoa. And all it did was turn every <laughs> every single pastel grey. So that went down really well. Right, so I'm doing a bit of negative painting in here to get a little bit of light behind my trees. Well, that's pretty. Dorothy said cornmeal works as well. Cornmeal, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the equivalent of that is in the UK. That's an American thing, cornmeal. So I don't know. Now, this is a yellow, but I'm not sure it's the right colour. So I'm going to put some on and I may well have to go over it again. Because I think... 
And rice flour works. Yeah, rice flour. Yeah. But I actually quite like just wiping them on this lovely fluffy cover. Because they get dirty every second, you know? Right, so I've been, really here what I've done is I've used three different shades of a kind of corally colour. And there's a little bit of yellow in there. So I'm going to go in just with a little brush of yellow over the top. And then I'm going to blend. I'm going to blend that just with my finger. And that, it does lose its luminosity. Kitchen yeah, kitchen roll's good. I just like soft, fluffy things, Amanda, so that's why I like using the, the cloth. Right, so now I've got enough pastel on here, so as I go back in, the pastel's blending the pastel. I want my sky to look a bit smooth. And... That's too dark. So what I want to do is bring that much lighter. So I'm going to look for a very, very pale lemon. And I may even go a bit paler than that. I don't, as I say, I don't use white. This should be a very, very pale cream. Now, I have to try and get some of that reflected in my water. Um, and I've got quite a lot of colour on my water, which I'm now regretting. So I need to bring some of this colour down into around here because it's coming through. So I may find that when I put my yellow on here, it's going to go a horrible colour. So let's try putting a bit of peach in first. I've got away with it. Amanda said it's looking beautiful. Oh, you always say such nice things. Thank you. Hmm. Right, so I want some of my movement down here. a lighter blue up there. So I've got this really pretty turquoise. Let's see what that does. Mm, no. Mm, no, it needs to be more blue. But I want it to be quite turquoise. Mm. Let's see, this might just look silly. No, it's alright because it is a lighter version of what's already on there. down here. I always use my pastels on their sides. But everyone's different. She only says she doesn't need to paint to relax, she can just watch you. <laughs> it's, it's funny, isn't it, how relaxing it is watching people paint? I think that's why Bob Ross was such a star. How's our timing? No, it's 10 to 8. Mm. Okay. Can you see where I've got a mark going right across here? So there's obviously a flaw in the paper. 
try and get rid of it and then paint over it. Sorry? You can't see it from the camera. Oh, right. Well, that's good then. bits of sunlight poking through. Now I want some of that warmth. This looks very isolated, this colour down here, so I need to add a bit more of that in. Sure, that works, but it's in there now. Now, yeah, I still need a little bit more. There will be some more warmth. Right, and over here. Oh, that's because I can. And some of this bright blue, we had it earlier. What colour? No, it's this colour. There's some snow. I like that turquoise. Let's add a bit of that in somewhere. You can't add it everywhere, but no, isn't that pretty? Uh, what else? Just added a little bit of warmth. Mix it up a little bit. Mm. What's time, Ian? Uh, 1953. <gasps> okay. I mean, I didn't set a time on this, but an hour is probably enough for everybody. I'm just going to roll my chair back and have a look from the distance. That is so different from the one I did before. There's much too much turquoise in it though. So we're going to go back in blend some of that out because the turquoise should really be highlight that looks better there's some dark ground being dark ground here I 
in actual fact, what I've done is I've used several different shades of this blue green going down in various stages. What's the best way to show movement on water? So it's definitely um, it's different mark makers. If you want movement, then it's um, it's just trying to experiment and get that that rhythm. Um, but you also need to have a bit of light and dark in there. So down here, where you've got sort of you know, where it's rushing and it's closer, you can actually be quite expressive with your marks like this. A lot of the time it's about trial and error, seeing if it works or not. I think that's better. I've dulled down that turquoise a little bit. Um, and I may, you may find that my water isn't flat because I've been painting sideways on. So I apologise in advance if that's the case. And I am going to soon get to a point where my pastel won't work anymore on this water. But that's actually the brightest bit and I haven't got that in. So you can always use the trusty method of brushing off if you put too much pastel on. But I haven't got a brush to hand without reaching over everything. So I'm just going to try and paint over that. It's looking fabulous. Oh, that's really sweet of you, thank you. Well, I think, oh no, look, my bridge. I haven't done my bridge. Let's do my bridge. I was going to say it's done and it's not. So, my bridge actually has a bit of light across it. And then underneath, I just think it's very pretty. Thank you. more bridge like and behind it it's a bit more light Need some sort of firming up, I think. That's better, it looks more like a bridge now, doesn't it? That would have a little bit more of this breaking through, I think. Geraldine, she loves the colour. I think it's come together great. Oh, thanks. You never know, do you? When you... Amanda said it's gorgeous. Thank you. Beautifully at atmospheric sun colours, great depth. Oh, thank she you. She loves it. Oh. George wants to know if you use much hard pastels. And if so, what? No. Or... I don't often use hard pastels, um, and it's just because I forget, really, I think. I have got them, but I tend only to use them for drawing out. A lot of people will use them for underpainting, but I'd rather just use less um, unison. And because they're so highly pigmented, if 
you use them wet for your underpainting or you blend them, they go such a long way. I mean, they seem really expensive, but they last forever. Well, unless you drop them like I did last week. It's always a worry, but it is a hazard of the job, particularly when you go out with them a lot. <coughs> I'm just getting some darker. That's a bit better. So the amazing colours, it looks gorgeous. Thank you. But you can experiment with all your own colours, you know, it could be pinks and mauves or... I do find throwing in a bit of turquoise, no matter what you've painted, always brightens it up. <laughs> Christine says, do you use poly polychromos pastel sticks? Do I? I don't think so. I think mine are Conte, but I, I couldn't tell you, to be honest, because I threw... Barbara wants to know, how are you doing the shimmery effect in the Laguna River? Um, I am literally just brushing my pastel very, very gently across the surface like that. But the problem I've got into in the middle is I've got too much pastel on the paper. So what I will do when you've all gone and you're, no one's watching and I haven't got a reach across the camera, I'll get a paintbrush and I will brush some of that out and probably go back over it. Um, but I think for this evening, I am probably, she says, da -da -da -da, a little bit more of that in. Just brighten that up. This is a really pale blue. I haven't used any white in this. Rebecca said it's been inspiring. She loves a new style and she can force herself to try it. Dibby dabby. Not get worried about it. Yeah, no, no. Because if you if you make a mistake, you can just go back and go over it, so it doesn't matter. As long as you've left yourself enough tooth in the paper, just do your dibby dabby. And you'll have a nice loose. Perfect. That's it, my lovelies. Thank you very much for joining me. I've really enjoyed it. I hope turquoise you have. Is great. Yeah, I love turquoise. It's my favourite colour. Hello, Grant. Long time no see. So this, as I say, this is going to be... Um, you're welcome, Amanda. So this is going to be left in the group, so you can come in at any time and um, revisit it. And I would love to see your versions please post them in the event or on my page or it's very confusing because i've got the if you aren't members of the um, there's a julie fold art um pastel club group um if you aren't members find me and request um and it's very confusing because i've got my my personal profile my julie fold art profile and then i've got a julie fold art pastel club which is a group and trying to work out where I'd set this up and where it was going to be, which profile was doing it. It's a bit mad before we went live. But thanks so much for joining me. I've really enjoyed it. And um, I hope to see you again soon. Take care and do share what you do. I'd love to see them. Tag me so I know. Bye. <laughs>